Hello, it's Shawnee. Welcome back. I'm in my office. I've also started doing my makeup. Um, I use the NYX Can't Stop Won't Stop Concealer as primer, and I've been going in with the Charlotte Tilbury uh, Fire Rose Quad. So I started with this shade, and now I'm going to go in with this shade. So have I talked about the fact that I now have a CPAP machine. So this process has been about a month long, I think. It started because uh, just some health stuff was going on and I didn't know what it was connected to. I didn't know if it was my seizures, like high blood pressure, I didn't know what it was connected to. And one of my doctors and Jessa, they were like, maybe you have sleep apnea, you should get assessed for it. So I was like, okay, because I found out from G that I snore badly. And I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> you snore too. Anyway, and also Jessa, <laughs> when we went to New York, she was like, yeah, you snore. I'm like, okay, okay, whatever. And that can be one of the things that is maybe an indication of sleep apnea. Anyway, so I did the little home test and it confirmed like yeah and it's not good so then after that they're like well here are some options you can either pay for a CPAP out your own pocket or you can try to go through your insurance and I was like <laughs> insurance which is that's already a problem right like I have insurance so I have access to these things, but people who don't have insurance, so we just gonna let them have sleep apnea and not have any sort of like treatment. Okay, anyway. So um, I was like, yeah, how about we try to go through the insurance? And so once they looked into it, like the company, they were like, okay, your insurance is going to pay 90%. And I'm like, bet, <laughs> yes. I can manage the other 10%, hopefully, right? So um, I had already spoken to a nurse practitioner and then once they figured out I'm gonna get the CPAP machine, they were like, we're gonna send it, but you have to have an appointment with a respiratory therapist first or like by the time you get your machine so that they can go over it with you. So my appointment with the respiratory therapist had been on a Tuesday, but I got the CPAP on a Friday so I started using it on Friday. Anyway, so once I met with her, Diamond, um, I'm going to go in with the matte shade. Once I met with her, I was like, oh, I've already been using it. <laughs> She's like, that's fine. So she gave me like all the, she went over everything, um, all the parameters, like using it and everything. And I had, you know, I had decided that even though I can't make this machine look sexy, being well rested is sexy. So I was just like, I'm gonna go ahead and do this. But I was like, I know I can't have that whole mask over my face. I just can't. And I guess a lot of people feel claustrophobic with it. I was just like, I'm not trying to look like a deep sea diver, not doing it. And I guess the way that I sleep, they were like, actually the, um nose they call them nose pillows the nose mask that's going to be the best for you um because they were like do you sleep with your mouth open and i was like no it's pretty closed <laughs> um and sleep on your side like all these different things that it just made sense for me to um have the nose one so i'm like bet so i start using the with the CPAP, you get all the things. You get the machine. You get there's like a little water tank for humidity. You only you can only use distilled water. So I had to go to the grocery store around the corner and get distilled water. And then you have the tube, and then you have like the the mask itself. And there's like a almost like a headband kind of thing. And I was like, listen, y'all need to make sure that this fits over like bonnets and stuff, like. <laughs> um, so then they send you the nose pillows that you put in your nose. So they, if it comes with the medium on, I was like, cool, I'm going I'm to start with the medium. I was like, the large is going to be too big. And I thought that the medium, or I'm sorry, the small was going to be too small. It was very like, what's her face in the three bears? 
Why don't I ever remember that girl's name? What's her name? Cinderella, Becky, homegirl with the three bears, and she was like trying to figure out what bed she was gonna sleep in. I don't know why I can't. Dorothy, no, I don't, I don't know. Okay, obviously that wasn't a big part of my childhood. Anyway, so I was using the um, medium one, and I thought it was fine. And at some point, again, I had to like I just I've talked to so many people um, telling me directions and stuff, and I was telling another lady I forget her name starts with an A. It's something interesting. Adele? No, I don't know. Okay, Avon. I mean, anyway. Um, and she was like, well, give them all a try. And I was like, oh, okay. Like I knew that the large was going to be too large. So I went ahead and tried the small and it was so much better. Like, it feels like it's really sealed. Um, and I, I can't like hear myself. Like, it's just, it's so much better, which was surprising. So once I did that, I had to contact Diamond and be like diamond the small fits best so then they sent me like because you have to change them every two weeks or whatever so anyway they go through all the things that you got to do and of course i took notes because i'm a good student so how often you have to wash it wash everything like disinfect all this stuff initially it was like i was doing too much um <laughs> so she was like yeah you don't have to do all that um, and then they were like, to disinfect it, you need to use like vinegar. My silly self, I was like, can I use apple cider vinegar? And she was like, no, you're not making a dressing. And I was like, fair point. So I also had to get some regular like white vinegar. Um, so then here's the thing. Here's the thing that I had to take copious notes on and ask questions. So I remember I said that they said, the insurance is going to pay 90%. Now, in order for the insurance to pay 90%, I have to only clean the tubing, the mask, the machine, everything. I can only clean it with certain products. If I try to use other products, then they're going to consider that like, like I can mess it up. And so they're not going to pay. So I'm like, bet, I'm going to just use what y'all told me to use. I can use some Dawn dish soap and I can use some vinegar and water. Got you. <sighs> what else did they say? I don't even know. But then the other thing that they said, this is the part that got me. And maybe people who have the CPAP machines, they know this. But they were like, you have to use it for at least four hours a night for 21 out of 30 days. And I was like, squeeze. <laughs> and they were like, if you don't do that, the insurance is probably not going to pay for it. So they were like, the first 90 days are the most important. I don't know why. I don't know if you have three chances to do the t 21 days. So I'm like, great. Now I'm, now I'm anxious. I was already anxious going to bed. Then I was anxious finding out about the sleep apnea. And y'all, now I'm like, shoot, I got to get four hours. Like now, now I'm just anxious. And people who have sleep apnea most of the times we're not getting good rest um so now now you're gonna add to that but okay so I was like insurance is shady and everybody's like well how are they gonna know well now like CPAP machines are this newfangled thing where they basically the machine gives the information to the company so they can see if I'm asleep or not I'm like this is feeling real big brother like there was one night I think I took the dag on sleep app off since I've gotten it I've only like missed one night and I got a call the next morning and they're like oh we noticed that you took it off last night or you didn't meet the four hours and I'm like are you in my bedroom like what, <laughs> what? so Basically, now I'm like stressed because I need to make sure that I'm getting a certain amount of sleep or they're not going to pay. I'm like, that's just like insurance. That's just like insurance, right? Like at some point, you going to have to pay for something related to my sleep apnea. You're going to either have to pay for the machine or you're going to have to pay for whatever health issue like comes around as a result of not treating it. Anyway. So I've been using it for, I think, like 17 days now. And it comes with an app, right, that you have to download. 
and you can see like you can get a score of stick it if I can show you you can get a score on your usage and sleep or whatevs and so of course because I am who I am I want a hundred I, I would like to be at a hundred I'm not and I've had to sit with that and you know talk to my therapist about it um but what I learned from Reddit is that this app doesn't really tell you much like let me see my best I've I've had a couple hundreds and the lowest I've had is 65 so bad like this is what the app looks like do you guys care about this in case you are gonna get a CPAP okay so they oh this is the night I didn't make four hours they tell you your usage hours they tell you how good the seal was from the mask they tell you how many like apnea events you have a night how many times you take off the mask and then they give you a score so that was 65 there were a couple of days when I did get 100 like look at that apparently I got seven hours of sleep I had a good mask seal I had three events per night so it's a little less and I only had my mask off two times because if you get up and go to the bathroom you have to turn the machine off because if you don't they'll like get an alert and I guess they think you're not alive anymore and then I don't know what they do I don't know okay so I have to take I have to turn it off when I go to the bathroom these are all things that I'm learning because I've never used one of these machines before um and I've never encountered this issue with insurance and so I was like well, like why <laughs> and I guess they're trying to like they're trying to remedy people getting the machine and not using it and also not cleaning it properly. And Diamond was telling me some stories and I'm like, oh, that's nasty. That's real nasty. Ew. Um, yeah. So, and I guess sometimes they used to like come and check on it. Like, I'm like, I don't need you. Like, let me sleep in peace now that I can breathe. Anyway, so I think I've got 17 days done I only I missed one day so I think I have 17 and then the thing is after 30 days then I have to go to the doctor and I was like oh so a doctor with you all and they're like no just any doctor oh like okay I mean I had an appointment scheduled to go see my doctor but it was like not it was like 29 days after <laughs> So I had to reschedule. I'm just like, this is a lot just to get some sleep. But I do feel like I have been getting better sleep. Um, my mood is a little better. I didn't realize how irritable I was. Um, like I'm not completely like why is it this? I'm not completely like, okay, it's definitely the C pop machine. But I noticed some changes. Why am I having such a hard time with this? I definitely noticed some changes, so I'm going to keep doing it. Um, last night was super uncomfortable with it for some reason, uh, so I don't know. So, yeah, that's been my experience with the CPAP. Who has, like, raise your hand. <laughs> Who has sleep apnea? Because I'm hearing or learning about so many people that do. I'm also learning about like um the various like reasons because I think in the past it seems like there's a stereotype and even I thought this that it was like about weight and stuff but it's like not necessarily like because you know if you go to the doctor and you are falling outside of the range of the BMI even though that actually tells you nothing about weight at all but the medical community continues to use it um then everything if you like have a broken toenail they're like you need to lose weight so anyway that's what i was thinking but it's not it could be so many things it could be my boobs sitting on my chest because they're heavy anyway so that's going um 
it's been stressful. <laughs> Erica and Jan have been checking on like, how's it going? Um, you know, my parents are all like, not that they're anti-American medicine, but my mom's like, do you really need it? I'm like, mother, girl, I stop, stop breathing out like 40 times. I think I think I need it. So needless to say, if you have been recommended, it's not that bad. It does take some getting used to. Um, once I got the right size nose pillows, it's even better. Like it really is. It is kind of weird because like, so it's like pushing air or whatever. They tell you like the pressure that is your prescription. And since the nose pillows are for people who don't sleep with their mouth open, there have been times when I've like been about to yawn and it's weird because it's the, the air pressure is weird. It's, it's weird. Okay. I don't know. It's weird, but oftentimes I would feel like I had to take or like I needed to take a nap during the day, maybe sometimes several naps, like really quick cat naps. Although cats nap pretty long. Um, but now I, most days I don't feel like I have to, like I, that it's a need. It's more of like, mm, I want to lay down for a little bit, but sometimes I would literally have like a hard time staying awake. And that was just getting really stressful. Um, yeah. Like a hard time staying awake, but then a hard time falling asleep in the evening. Because, you know, <laughs> yeah. So anyway, let me know if you've had to use a CPAP, what your experience is. If you have like the full-on Darth Vader mask, or if you have the nose pillows. I think those are the only types of masks they have. Oh, and I was saying that the app isn't doesn't tell you much, but there is another app for free that I downloaded and it tells you so much more and that one is just so much it's way more informative because also you can use an SD card and put it into the machine and then just like take it out and download it or whatever and you can see all of your all of the stuff so that's really good and really helpful so yeah I don't know why Felt the need to tell you all that, but here we are. I do have a question. I was reading, like, I think somebody posted on TikTok or something like this. Therapist, I believe, in L.A. She looks like an L.A. therapist. Anyway, she went on, you know, a little bit of a, uh, not Twitter, um, or X, a little bit of a TikTok rant. And she was saying that when she goes to the store and she uses a cart, she does not put the cart back. And she was just like, hate me if you want to or something. And so people did come at her and they were like, that's so wrong. Like if you use a cart, put it back. Um, and you know, other people are gonna have to come behind you and do that. And then if you're leaving it in the parking lot, you know, blah, blah, blah. Initially I was agreeing with them, but then she gave context and reason as to why she doesn't. And she said like she has a baby, I don't know how old, but she is not going to put the baby and the groceries and whatever in the car and then leave and go put the cart back and then come back. And I was like, that makes a lot of sense. I'm not leaving my baby in the car. And then like some people are like, it's only a few seconds or whatever, or then maybe you should park next to the cart return, which isn't always possible. Um, and some people are like, well, I just uh, drop off the groceries in the car take the baby in the cart with me and put it away and then take the baby back to the car. And I can't say that I would do all that. I I wouldn't, I like putting the cart back. So maybe I would, but what would you do? Would you, like, what would you do? Because I understand, like, I don't know. What would you do? Sometimes I feel bad because people be sometimes leaving carts all over the place and the person has to come out and like get them from everywhere and make sure that you're not stealing the cart. Um, 
which anyway, sometimes you sometimes you have to do things. Um, but I also really understand her reasoning. Like, I think initially she was trying to sound all big and bad until people were like, yeah, girl, that's, that's not it. Until she, like, explained it. So it seems like some people are agreeing with her and some people are not. And I don't know. I kind of understand where she's coming from. And I don't really know what I would do. So I haven't had to do that. but. I can imagine that I'm not going to put this little child up in the car and me go away to return this cart because even if it's a few seconds, like that's all it takes is a few seconds for something to go wrong. Honestly and truthfully. So let me know what you think. Okay, I'm going to do my brows and throw some powder on and then I will be right back. So here's the finished look. Now I've got to get ready to therapize people. I just have a couple back to back to back to back. Um, yeah, half are coming in, half are doing virtual. So anyways, let me know what you're thinking. Have you had experience with a CPAP machine? Uh, is this my experience? Is this a push for you to go get it checked out if like a cool person like me can have a CPAP then so can you and also let me know what you would do with the the shopping cart thing I'm curious uh, I hope that some of this was helpful and I also hope that you are continuing to take care of yourself I would love it if you like the video and I would love it even more if you subscribe to the channel thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time